In this section, I'm going to cover how you would apply discrete timing to cues on an EOS. Uh, by using discrete timing, you can actually get very, very specific in how you approach cue timing. You can go on a category by category basis or even drill all the way down to attribute by attribute basis. And I'm going to show you a few examples of each, so let's take a look at that. In our virtual show, we have a couple of cues, and I'm just going to run through the default timing. Everything was recorded with default five second time. We have color, we have intensity, we have a lot of things happening, and they're all happening in the default time of five seconds. Maybe in this queue, what I want to have happen is my background, my psych, change color in a bump. So what I want to do is apply a zero time to the entire color category, and that will apply it to my background as well as any other lights that are changing color in that. So to do that, I specify the queue, Q2. I hit my color soft key, color category soft key, time zero. Enter. And now on our cue list, we'll see that the oval that is indicating that we have color timing in cue number two will change to reflect that zero time. So let's take a look at that. I'll back up into cue number one and hit go. And our color changes on a bump and everything else fades in at its normal time. So that is applying timing to an overall category uh, with discrete timing. Let's take a look at getting a little more specific and applying some timing and some other timing attributes to categories and or parameters. So let's look at our cue number three. What we have is we have movement, we have color change, and we also have some gobos that are changing. And the designer's request is that the gobos snap from their current gobo to a new gobo, and then after that the lights move into their new position. So what we want to do is we want to delay the focus, and we want to put a zero timing on just the gobo change. So let's take a look at how we would do that. First, I want to look at the delay on a focus. So again, I do Q3, focus, delay, maybe two seconds. And where we're looking for the delay is here in the focus column. We can see that there's a two outside of the oval. The number inside the oval is the timing that is going to happen. The number outside the oval is the delay. And now I want to apply a zero time to just the gobo change on my Mac 2 case. So what I want to do is select the Mac 2 case and I want to select uh, my gobo wheel. In this case, it's gobo select number two. Time, zero, enter. Now, what we want to be looking for to confirm that this timing has been applied is next to the channel number in my channel display, you'll see a little T to indicate that there's a timing parameter that's been addressed here, and it's in red. The red color indicates that it is a manual value, and you have to store that in the queue. Um, it treats it just like any other manual value, so you have to remember that. The other place you can see what's happening is by pushing and holding the time key uh, on the console. This is not the time key that you uh, are using to assign queue timing. This is the time key that um, is located over here near the, near the uh, display keypad. And by pushing the time key, uh, while you have that key held down, our channel display will show you any discrete timing that you have entered into that channel or those channels. You can also go into about that channel and see that discrete timing. If you have multiple discrete timing, the about, about channel display will show that as well. So now that I've applied the discrete timing, I want to re-update that queue. And now I can see that the T next to the channel has turned blue to indicate that it's now in the queue. And there's a little plus next to the overall category time of five seconds. And that little plus indicates that there are some channels that are not being called in that five seconds. So there's additional information. Typically a plus somewhere indicates that there's additional info. And again, I could always push and hold my time key on the console to see what those values are. So let's take a look at how that looks when I run it. I'll back up into queue number two. And now when I push go, we have a gobo snap. And after our two second delay, the focus move occurs. That is how you would apply discrete timing to cues on the EOS.